were about to leave the suburbs, accompanied by the familiar Australian sound of caroling magpies. The male with a crisp white back feeds the juvenile, while the female lets everyone know. Crimson rosellas are around too. These birds are found throughout the Mount Lofty Ranges along Flurio Peninsula and further north. This Adelaide subspecies, commonly known as the Adelaide rosella, has a more orange colouring than the rich crimson of the nominate race. Today we're up early and it's a typical Adelaide January summer morning being very hot and the temperature is forecast to be 40 degrees. So this means we're unable to go into the national parks because of the risk of bushfires. But we still want to go birding. Where can we go? Well, we've decided we'll go down to a flora reserve near Victor Harbour, the Nangawunka Flora Reserve. And this small reserve has gum trees with lots of native shrubs. But most importantly, it has a pond with a bird hide opposite. So this is a great birding opportunity to get close views of our local birds as they come in to drink. Just an hour's drive from Adelaide, this beautiful reserve was established in 1982 at the corner of the Adelaide Victor and Waterport Roads. It's filled with native plants, most of them labelled, and features some glorious old gums with plenty of nesting sites for birds and other small creatures. The bird hide beside the pool provides a great chance on a hot day for a close look at birds which usually remain high above. Like these striated pardalotes, these are small stubby-billed short-tailed birds found only in Australia whose persistent chip-chip call is heard far more than the birds are seen as they feed on lerps in the upper foliage of tall eucalypts. This is the southeastern race which has a black crown with white streaks and a wide white wing streak with a red dot. The female is duller than the male with no distinguishing features. This yellow-faced honey eater is a member of the large Lycanostomus family of honey eaters and feeds mainly on manna flows through summer and autumn and nectar in the spring. Another member of the same family is the familiar white plumed honey eater or greenie. These are gleaners picking up manna and honeydew augmented with occasional insects. Although always alert and quick to give alarm calls, the noisy miners seem to be driving them out of Adelaide parks and gardens. A pair of red rumped parrots previously known as grass parrots have come in. The male displays spectacular colours of emerald green, yellow and blue with a bright red lower back and rump, while the female is a more subdued olive green. These medium small parrots are lovers of open grassland interspersed with eucalypts and can often be seen feeding on lawns in the suburbs. The female superb fairy wren is a drab brown compared to the brilliant blue breeding plumage of the male. These familiar birds of southeastern Australia spend most of their time hopping on the ground, never far from cover. The woolly wagtail is one of the best known and most widespread of Australian birds. Always on the move, flicking its tail to disturb insects, it seems fearless in its proximity to humans and its often aggressive behaviour to other far larger birds, like this red wattle bird. This is a large, widely distributed honey eater of eucalypt forests and woodlands and has a pair of dangling red fleshy cheek wattles and a voice like a cough. The somewhat smaller little wattle bird is still a large honey eater, but it lacks the distinguishing wattles and yellow belly of the red wattle bird. It prefers banksias and heath areas and depends largely on a diet of nectar, 
but also takes manna and hawks for insects in near vertical sorties. Coming in now is an immature crimson rosella, Adelaide subspecies, which has patches of colour but is still mainly green. It will attain full bright red adult plumage at around 15 months of age. Here's a white-browed scrub wren giving us a good look for once instead of scolding us harshly from dense understory. There are many subspecies in southern Australia. The farther west you go, the more streaks there are on the underbelly. This is an adult male with a long, thick white brow and black face mask. The female is paler without the contrast in facial features. A very thirsty white naped honey eater is coming. It has a prominent red eye ring, black head with a ragged black collar and pure white underparts. It certainly looks to be enjoying its bath. The head of the immature bird has not yet fully coloured up. This honey eater migrates down the east coast of Australia in spring, often in the company of large flocks of yellow-faced honey eaters, to spend the summer in the southern breeding areas and fly north again in autumn. Yes, it's hot. Here's another flycatcher, the grey fantail. Always active and very confiding and inquisitive, its squeaky silvery call seems to have followed us in almost every habitat around Australia. The nearest thing to a hummingbird in Australia is this tiny honey eater, the eastern spinebill. It's a great aerial acrobat while catching insects and can hover in flight and feed from flowers on the wing by extending its long tongue. The New Holland honey eater is widespread over southern Australia and is often aggressive in competition for nectar and insects. This Adelaide rosella is very thirsty but also very cautious. A lone rainbow lorikeet is considering the water. Although hot and thirsty, it will wait until the rest of the gang is here to indulge in their typical screeching, chattering, gregarious behaviour. And in they all go to enjoy a colourful communal bath. This species is the second most abundant bird in Australia, shooting across the sky in raucous flocks which alight on flowering native trees to squabble over the nectar and pollen, which they mop out of the blossoms with their long, tough-tipped tongues. These birds are now common garden birds, feeding throughout metropolitan South Australia. They've made tough competition for nesting hollows for Adelaide and Eastern Rosellas. Contrasting in every way is the quiet approach of a crested pigeon, muted in both colour and behaviour. This is another species which is expanding its range from drier inland regions to coastal areas and is now common in suburban Adelaide Gardens. It leaves on characteristic whirring wings. Thirsty work. This plain grey olive bird with a dark eye and prominent bill is a female golden whistler. It's quiet at the moment, but in spring it calls with the male, defending their territory with persistent, loud ringing whistles, ending with a whip. And now we have another noisy gang to rival the lorikeets. The New Holland honey eaters are back in force and enjoying themselves immensely. One of the first birds discovered by Europeans, it was first described in 1790. The Sydney district was then known as New Holland and the name has been retained. 
Visiting over a hundred species of native plants, this species is an extremely important pollinator. Will they or won't they? The cautious Adelaide rosellas are back and carefully considering. At last it seems the heat has overcome their reluctance and they've decided to dip a claw in the water. This subspecies known as the Flurio Adelaide rosella is a lighter red than the subspecies from the southeast of the continent but brighter than most of the birds in the Adelaide metropolitan region. Very different is the Riverland subspecies known as the yellow rosella. Farther north of Adelaide, the colour generally becomes paler, with a variation now called the Flinders Adelaide rosella. What they all have in common is the distinctive blue cheek patch. Crested shrike tits, great for once to see these right in front of us, rather than high in a tall eucalypt, tearing and crunching at the bark with their strong bills to find insects. Those bills comprise peeling bark and decaying wood from tree trunks, cut into hard galls on live twigs and rip apart the nests of leaf-tying caterpillars. Yet these birds are unobtrusive and easy to overlook. Their nests too are high in eucalypts. Such striking birds with their black and white heads, beautiful black crests and bright yellow underparts. Usually we see only the bright yellow as we strain our necks to look up after hearing the crunching. These are females with an olive green throat. The males have a black throat. They're found in the Great Dividing Range from southern Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and into South Australia. Yep, that beats looking up for them. That's the call we've been hoping to hear. The spectacular male golden whistler has turned up. Similar colouring to the shrike tit, but far easier to see. And here's another noisy boy who's hard to miss. The widespread sulphur crested cockatoo with its raucous screeches is a very familiar Australian bird. There are other cockatoos in the banks here. This is a male yellow-tailed black cockatoo with a round yellow cheek patch, reddish eye ring and dark grey bill. The female has a grey eye ring, a pale bill and brighter cheek patch. We're excited to hear an unmistakable call. There are black-chinned honeyeaters around. With its numbers decreasing in South Australia, it's not commonly seen now. It's a noisy, active feeder as it forages in the canopy, usually in small parties calling to maintain contact while working quickly through the foliage, moving from tree to tree. It's one of the Melothreptus group of honey eaters, all of which have short, wedge-shaped bills and spend much more time gleaning in foliage and tree branches than rifling in blossom for nectar. Yep, pretty happy to see those. This was a great place to spend a very hot day bird watching.